This is an exciting new era in sewing. As a Baby Lock Eclipse owner, you'll be able to do more sewing in less time and enjoy a new ease in serger sewing. This instructional video is a step-by-step -step guide designed to help you with your serger sewing. Later, as you become more confident, the video will be a handy reference for expanding your creative capabilities. I'll finish serging my scarf with the narrow rolled hem, then I'll show you how easy it is to operate your Eclipse. Since sergers operate differently than a conventional sewing machine, basic serging techniques are somewhat different as well. Overedging to finish hems, facings, and seams is one of the most basic ways to use a serger. I'll cut up some fabric squares and show you just how easy it is to use your baby like Eclipse. Serging is a kind of knitting process that loops two, three, or four threads together to create a strong, stretchable stitch. The Baby Lock Eclipse operates with one or two needles and two loopers, each carrying a thread that take the place of a bobbin. The stitches form around metal prongs called stitch fingers. They keep the stitches from jamming into the machine and prevent puckering or rolling of the fabric edge. When fabric is placed into the machine, it reaches the feed dogs first. They move the fabric along as the upper and lower cutting blades trim the edge. Then the loopers and needles form the stitch on the fabric edge. The threads become locked over the fabric and the stitches encase the raw edge with thread to prevent fabric raveling. The Baby Lock Eclipse has a built-in accessory compartment here. The lid forms the thread stand for the looper thread cones. Lift and swing out the lid to reveal the tray holding some of the accessories. The others are with the machine's packing materials. Accessories include tweezers, a needle insertion lint brush, two screwdrivers, four spool caps, four spool support sponge discs, four thread nets, a package of needles, an upper knife replacement blade, a specialty thread looper threader, and a machine cover. To set up the Baby Lock Eclipse, plug the power cord into the machine first, then into the wall outlet. The power switch is here. It also turns on the sewing light. Raise the telescopic thread guide to its highest position. Rotate the shaft until each section clicks into a locked position. The Baby Lock Eclipse comes with an assortment of sewing machine needles that can be used for most medium to heavyweight fabrics. The needle's semi-ballpoint design is perfect for knits as well as wovens. There's a handy needle reference chart in your instruction book for matching the right needles to the right fabric. All types of thread may be used on your Baby Lock Eclipse. 100% long staple polyester thread is the best choice for most sewing. When using threads on this style of cone, place the cone or spool securely over the cone holders. If the cone thread has a smaller opening, remove the cone holder to place it on the spindle. This particular style fits securely when placed upside down and the wide bottom becomes a spool cap. When using standard spool threads in your serger, replace the cone holders with these spool support sponge discs. They help hold smaller spools securely. Since threads for the serger feed from the top, place a spool cap into the top of standard spools to provide a smooth surface for thread to reel off freely. Thread nets may be placed over threads that tend to slip off the bottom of the spool during sewing. These are especially helpful with nylon, rayon, or silk threads. The Baby Lock Eclipse has an exclusive jet air threading system that instantly and automatically jet airs thread through tubular loopers. Threading has never been easier. To thread the Eclipse, raise the presser foot to release all tensions and open the front cover. Push this lock button firmly and at the same time turn the hand wheel until the button snaps into the locked position and the lock button release lever moves to the far left. Set the looper thread switch to L for lower looper threading. Place the thread cone or spool on the far right spindle. Slip the thread into the telescopic thread guide. 
into this top guide, through the groove, and down to this guide. Pull a 12 inch length of thread and insert the end into the right threading port about one inch. Press the lever and the lower looper is threaded. Clip the thread at the base plate and leave it hanging loose. Now set the looper threading switch to U for upper looper threading. Place the thread on the third spindle. Thread here, here, through the groove, and through this thread guide. Pull a 12 inch length of thread and insert the end into the left threading port about one inch. Press the lever, instant jet air threading. Place the thread under the presser foot. If the thread does not come through the looper eyes with one push of the lever, simply press the lever again until it does. Be sure you have placed at least one inch of thread in the threading port. Needle threading is just as simple. With the machine lock button still in the locked position, set the needle threader selector on R for right needle. Place the thread on the second from left spindle. Thread the needle thread guides, bring it through the groove, and here, here, and here. Pull a 12 inch length of thread, lower the presser foot, hold the thread taut horizontally, and push the needle threader lever down to insert the hook into the needle eye. Slip the thread under the threader hook guides, release the needle threader lever and allow the thread loop to be pulled through the needle eye. Raise the presser foot to place the thread under the foot. Set the needle selector on L for left needle. Place the thread on the far left spindle. Thread the needle thread guides, the groove, and here, here, and here. Pull a 12 inch length of thread, lower the presser foot, and thread the left needle just as the right needle was threaded. Could it possibly be easier? Once the eclipse is threaded, move the lock button release lever to the right until it stops. You'll hear the lock release as the lock button pops out automatically. If the lock button isn't released, the machine won't run. Place the needle and upper looper threads under the foot into the back. Lower the presser foot and sew a test stitch. You can leave the presser foot down for most surging. Just place the fabric at the toe of the foot and sew. Be careful not to push or pull the fabric. The machine will feed it evenly without help. Cut the thread chain here with the Eclipse built-in thread cutter. As you serge, you will discover that maneuvering the fabric is different from conventional sewing because the threads form around the stitch fingers. To clear the stitch fingers, simply raise the presser foot, which releases all tensions, and raise the needle. Then pull the threads gently from behind the foot. Stitch length adjustment is a simple turn of this style. There are two stitch length ranges, each numbered from one for the shortest stitch to four for the longest. One range is for standard serging and one is for rolled hemming. The most often used setting is three millimeters or about 10 stitches per inch, which is ideal for seaming and overedging most fabrics. You may prefer a shorter stitch length for lightweight fabrics or for the rolled edge. Heavier fabrics and applications such as gathering may require lengthening the stitch. The stitch width dial has two sets of numbers indicating two width ranges. The larger numbers, 5.5 and 7.5 millimeters, indicate the stitch width when the left hand needle is in use. The smaller numbers, 3 and 5, apply when using the right hand needle. The M setting is for the rolled edge. Adjusting the stitch width moves the knife blade as well as the stitch fingers for complete fabric support with any stitch width, and the width is infinitely variable between either end of the range. You'll generally use a wider stitch for loosely woven fabrics and a narrower stitch on knitted, tightly woven, or sheer fabrics.
When no trimming is desired, stitching on a fold, for instance, turn the switch clockwise to the lock position to disengage the cutting action. Sometimes called an overlock, the serger is different than any conventional sewing machine you've used. To overedge, guide the fabric along the blade so the edge of the fabric is shaved clean but not trimmed away. Then sew seams on your conventional sewing machine and press them open as usual. Because notches would be cut away in this process, mark them before serging with tiny snips into the seam allowance or with a water-soluble fabric marker. For garments or projects that don't require a conventional pressed open seam, you can actually stitch and finish all in one operation. The four thread seam is strong and provides give or flexibility according to the fabric needs. To seam, place two layers of fabric right sides together. Align the fabric edge for the desired seam width. The orange mark indicates 5 eighths of an inch from the left needle. It's important to remember not to serge over pins. They will dull the cutting blades. Simply remove the pins as they approach the blade or place the pins in from the opposite direction with the points about a half an inch from the cut edge. The serger stitch doesn't unravel readily and in most cases a seam is secured by another intersecting seam. If that isn't the case, there are several different options for securing a serged seam. An easy way is to apply a dot of seam sealant on the threads at the fabric edge. Allow it to dry, then cut off the excess thread chain. Another method is to leave a three or four inch thread chain and use a double-eyed needle to weave the thread chain back into the stitching. You can lock the seam by sewing over the previous stitches, similar to back stitching. To lock the beginning of a seam, turn the hand wheel toward you, taking two to three stitches into the fabric. Leave the needles in the lowest position to anchor the fabric. Raise the presser foot and smooth out the chain with your fingers. Then bring the chain around and under the foot so that it aligns with the edge of the fabric. Lower the foot and continue sewing, catching the thread chain in the stitches for about one inch. Let the blades cut off any remaining chain. At the end of the seam, take one stitch off the fabric edge. Raise the presser foot and bring the needles to the highest position. Pull back gently on the fabric to clear the stitch fingers. Turn the fabric over end to end and reposition it under the foot with the needle at the seam edge aligned with the previous needle line. So five to six stitches over the previous stitches, being careful not to cut them, then pivot and chain off the fabric. Next I'll show you how to serge outside corners. Stitch along one edge until you reach the corner. Take one stitch off the edge of the fabric. Leave the needles in the highest position and gently pull the fabric to clear the stitch fingers. Turn the fabric and reposition the needles at the previous row of stitching and serge. If you have a loose thread loop at the corner, it's caused by too much slack in the needle thread when clearing the stitch fingers. Try again. Turning corners takes a little practice. An inside corner is handled differently. Stitch until the blade, not the needle, reaches the corner. Lower the needle to anchor the fabric, then raise the presser foot. Position the fabric so the cut edge becomes a straight stitching line and a pleat is formed to the left. Then continue serging the remaining edge. When done correctly, the pleat will disappear after stitching. To serge around inside and outside curves, guide the fabric into the cutting blades, not the needle. Remember, cutting takes place before the fabric reaches the needle. And because the long serge or presser foot holds the fabric more securely, you may need to raise and lower the presser foot several times to maneuver around very tight curves. The tape sewing slot in the presser foot is designed to guide stabilizing tape, narrow elastic, or decorative ribbon in the stitching. Insert the tape or elastic into the slot and under the back of the foot. Adjust the stitch width to match the tape width. 
Place the fabric under the foot and stitch. Your Baby Like Eclipse is equipped with a full range differential feed, meaning it has two sets of feed dogs that can be adjusted to move independently of each other. A wonderful feature that allows you complete fabric control from silkies to the stretchiest knits. When the adjusting lever is set on end for normal feeding, the feed dogs move at the same rate. This is the setting to use for most fabrics and applications. When the differential feed lever is set below end, the front feed dog takes shorter strokes than the back feed dog, causing the fabric to be stretched slightly, pulling it taut as it enters the needle. These lower settings prevent puckers on lightweight fabrics, can add more stretch to swim and active wear, and can be used to create a lettuce edge. When the lever is set above N, the front feed dog will move farther than the back feed dog, causing the fabric to feed into the needle more rapidly than it feeds out. As a result, the fabric becomes compressed or eased. This can eliminate wavy seams and stretchy fabrics, or those cut on the bias grain. It's also great for easing in circular hems and sleeve caps. At the maximum setting of two, the differential feed can actually gather a lightweight fabric to double fullness. To maximize the gathering effects, use the longest stitch length setting. It's easy to adjust those gathers. Run your finger over the thread chain to smooth out the loops. Pull on the two shorter threads, they're the needle threads, and adjust for precise placement of your gathers. Great gathers every time. Three thread serging works well for edge finishing most wovens and seaming knits that don't require the durability a fourth thread provides. The three thread stitch is also used for many decorative applications. It's easy to convert your Eclipse to serge with three threads by simply eliminating either needle. Snip the thread just above the needle eye. Remove the thread, loosen the clamp screw and remove the needle. Then re-tighten the needle clamp screw slightly to prevent the screw from falling out. Surging with the left needle gives you the widest stitch, and using the right needle produces a narrower stitch width about two millimeters smaller. Now test for stitching. I'll show you how to create an easy rib trim finish using the three thread stitch on the Baby Lock Eclipse. Fold the rib trim in half. Place it along the right side of the garment and serge, stretching the trim to fit. Now that's a professional looking finish. Two thread serging conserves thread when over edging and provides a functional and decorative flat lock seam. The serged edges of the flat lock seam pull open and flatten with the stitch for a non-bulky join. When sewn with specialty threads, two thread serging makes decorative seams and edges for active wear, children's clothing, as well as home decorating. Two thread serging uses either the left or right hand needle and the lower looper. To convert to two thread serging, open the front cover and cut the upper looper thread just above the threading port. Raise the presser foot and pull out the clipped thread. Turn the hand wheel to bring the upper looper to its lowest position. Turn the looper hook up and to the left, then slip the hook itself into the upper looper eye. Close the front cover, lower the foot and sew a test sample. The two thread flat lock seam requires a different tension setting. Loosen the needle tension. You may need to tighten the lower looper tension. Sew a test stitch. When the tensions are set correctly, the needle and lower looper threads should overcast evenly on the cut edge of the fabric. The flat lock stitch has what is called loops and ladders. For the loops to show on the outside, place fabric wrong sides together for sewing the seam. To produce the ladder on the outside, Place the fabric right sides together. Serge, 
trimming the fabric edge. When the seam is completed, pull crosswise on the fabric layers to flatten the seam. Don't limit your use of the flat lock to just seam lines. When sewn on a fold, flat lock top stitching creates attractive decorative effects within the body of a garment or project. Either follow placement lines on your pattern or design your own special effects by stitching the fabric before laying out the pattern pieces. For a flat lock top stitch, lock the upper cutting blade. Fold the fabric along the stitch placement lines. Position the fabric under the presser foot with the fold aligned with the right edge of the foot. You can use the upper blade as a fabric guide. Stitch, guiding the fabric so that the loops hang slightly off the fold. Gently pull the fabric to flatten the stitches. Isn't that beautiful? Use the two thread capabilities of the Baby Lock Eclipse for nearly invisible blind hemming. Set the machine for two thread serging using the right needle. Set the stitch width at five and the stitch length at four. Fold up the hemline and press it in place. Then fold the hem allowance back against the fabric right side to create a soft fold about a quarter inch from the top edge of the hem. Place the fold under the presser foot and stitch, allowing the needle to catch only a thread or two of the soft fold. The blades will trim the top edge of the hem. Open the soft fold and press flat. The versatile two-thread stitch is functional for blind hemming, seaming, and overcasting. Throw in some imagination and a few fabric scraps and you can create a masterpiece. The dramatic design element on this luxurious pillow was easily accomplished with the two-thread flat lock using metallic thread in the needle and designer six rayon in the lower looper. This richly textured coverlet is a perfect example of the versatility of the two-thread by using the ladder and loop side of the flat lock. This coordinating pillow was designed using the rolled edge settings of the Baby Lock Eclipse. The rolled edge stitch gives you the narrowest stitch possible. I used it here for the fine finish on the ruffles of this pinafore and for a quick and easy decorative detail on the bodice and skirt. I'll show you how to convert the Baby Lock from two thread back to three or four thread serging. Then I'll show you how easy it is to use the Baby Lock Eclipse for rolled edging. To return to three or four thread serging, open the front cover and bring the upper looper to its lowest position. With the tweezers, release the looper hook from the eye of the upper looper. Rotate it further to the right until it snaps back into place out of the way. Replace the needle for four thread serging and re-thread it and the upper looper. Readjust tensions for four thread or three thread serging. Just the right hand needle and thread is used for the rolled edge setting. Clear the stitch fingers. Turn the stitch length adjustment dial clockwise into the rolled hem range, setting the desired stitch length. Turn the stitch width dial until the M lines up with the indicator. Increase the lower looper tension to six or seven. The tension adjustment tightens the lower looper thread, causing the fabric edge to roll around the stitch finger. The upper looper thread then wraps the fabric edge. Sew a test sample first to determine if the fabric edge is sufficiently rolled. If not, increasing the upper looper tension may help to create the desired effect. The three thread rolled edge setting is sturdy enough for seaming shears and lightweight fabrics, replacing the time consuming French seaming. Set the stitch length at two, then simply sew the seams. Isn't that a gorgeous, nearly invisible seam? The Eclipse makes everything you sew look better and more professional. Making spaghetti straps and narrow bias cording is surprisingly simple with the Eclipse narrow rolled edge. Make a thread chain longer than the strap. Raise the foot and bring the chain to the front. Fold the fabric around the chain, making sure it stays securely in the fold and doesn't get caught in the stitches. The blades trim away the excess seam allowance. When the stitching is complete, Pull on the thread chain to turn the strap right side out. 
Isn't that as easy as I promised? A frilly or lettuce edge can be created using the rolled hem on stretch fabrics and bias edges. It makes a pretty decorative edging for active wear, lingerie, accessories, and children's wear. Set the eclipse to rolled edge settings in the differential feed lever at 0.6. For a leafier effect, stretch the fabric slightly in front of the presser foot as you search. As an added bonus, you can make professional looking belt loops and button loops using the rolled edge thread chain sewn without fabric. You can use just two threads for a rolled edge. The two thread version is sometimes preferred for hemming very soft fabrics, which may be too bulky if sewn with three threads. Check your Eclipse instruction manual for machine settings. To change the Eclipse back to standard serging, First, clear the stitch fingers. Next, return the stitch length dial to the standard range. Set the stitch width and length at the desired settings. Readjust the tensions. Replace the left hand needle and its corresponding thread for four thread serging. It's easiest to learn about the Eclipse tension settings by threading with four different thread colors. Then go ahead and experiment. You really can't harm the machine by turning the tension dials. And you'll find a tension adjustment chart in your instruction manual. With tensions properly set, the upper and lower looper threads lock together evenly over the cut fabric edge. The left needle thread interlocks with both looper threads at the stitching line to create the seam. The right needle thread, visible from the top side of the stitch, interlocks with both loopers to add durability. The tension on each thread is controlled by its own tension dial. Turn the dial to a higher number to tighten or increase the tension. Turn it to a lower number to loosen or decrease the tension. If the interlocking point pulls to the underside of the fabric, the lower looper tension is too tight. Loosen it by turning the far right tension dial to a lower number. If the interlocking point pulls to the top side of the fabric, the upper looper tension is too tight. Loosen it by turning the second from right hand tension dial to a lower number. The needle threads should form a straight row of stitches on the top side and be barely visible on the back side. If loops show on the back, tighten the dial by turning them to a higher number. If the stitching looks like this from the right side, as if the seam were about to come apart, that is also a symptom of loose needle tension. No matter what stitch you use, beautiful stitches with incredible effects can be achieved by searching with specialty threads, cords, and ribbons. These heavier or shinier threads can be used to enhance appearance, add strength or elasticity, or create special effects depending on the thread and stitch you choose. Some specialty threads work well through the needle and loopers, while others are too heavy to be threaded through the needle and are for looper use only. Lightweight threads such as rayon machine embroidery thread and nylon monofilament can be threaded simply by tying them onto the existing serger thread. Clip the existing thread at the cone and place the new cone on the spindle. Tie a knot. Raise the presser foot and pull the old thread from under the foot until the new thread comes through the machine. When changing a needle thread, pull the thread through until the knot reaches the needle eye. Then clip off the knot and re-thread the needle eye. Medium weight threads such as stretch nylon thread are too bulky to form a knot that would fit through the threading port of the loopers. With the Eclipse in the locked position, use the specialty thread looper threader. Place the thread through the threader eye. Now place the threader end in the threading port and pull the thread completely through. You can also thread the loopers with the aid of a thread cradle made from standard threads. Raise the presser foot to release all tensions. At the threading port, clip the looper thread to be replaced. 
pull the thread out from under the foot and out of the upper guides. With the machine lock button in the locked position, set the looper threader switch to U or L according to which looper is being threaded. Place the specialty thread on the spindle, thread it into the upper guides, and leave a 12-inch tail above the threading port. Cut a 24-inch strand of standard thread and fold it in half to make the thread cradle. Insert the ends of the thread into the threading port about one inch. Hold on to the cradle loop. Press the lever so the thread ends come out the looper eye. Place the specialty thread end into the cradle loop and pull the thread ends until the specialty thread comes through the looper eye. For heavyweight threads, such as pearl cotton, ribbon thread, and fine yarn, the process is somewhat different since you'll need to bypass the threading port. Thread the Eclipse with a thread cradle, just as I showed you. Release the machine lock button and pull the loop of thread cradle out of the tube extending from the threading system. Leave the thread in the looper arm itself. Place the specialty thread into the loop of the thread cradle and from under the foot pull on the regular thread until the specialty thread comes through the looper eye. The Baby Lock Eclipse offers the convenience of a snap-on presser foot. Push this button to release the foot. Lower the presser foot lever to snap it on. There are a variety of optional snap-on presser feet used to apply elastics, cords, beads, and more. Be sure and ask your favorite Baby Lock dealer for more information. The Baby Lock Eclipse uses standard household sewing machine needles. Poor stitch quality is often the result of worn needles with nicks or burrs. You'll want to be sure and change your needles regularly about every third project. To change a needle, raise the needle to the highest position. Place the needle insertion end of the lint brush over the needle. Loosen the clamp screw and remove the needle. Insert the new needle with the flat side to the back as far as it will go, checking the position in the viewing area. Tighten the needle clamp screw. Don't worry if you drop the needle, it's easily retrieved by pulling out this tray. Your Baby Lock Eclipse will operate at peak performance if it's kept clean at all times. Your serger needs no oiling for many years because the major moving parts are made from oil impregnated metal. Use the cleaning brush often during serging to keep lint off the knives, needles, and feed dogs. Remove this cover periodically to clean more thoroughly. Your Baby Lock Eclipse is a high quality, dependable performance machine and with proper care and maintenance, it'll give you years of sewing pleasure. There's an impressive variety of books and videotapes available to help you expand your surging expertise. For some fantastic tips on how to add designer touches to everything you surge, be sure to ask your Baby Lock dealer for the Serger Pizzazz videotape. An excellent resource for all kinds of sewing and surging information is the Sewing Update video series. Each volume is a no-nonsense, information-packed videotape that helps save time and guarantees successful results from the start. Some books I'd highly recommend to add to your surging library are Understanding Sergers, Surged Garments in Minutes, The ABCs of Surging, and Innovative Surging. You won't want to miss the Serger Idea Book and the handy guidebook written just for Baby Lock owners, Know Your Baby Lock by Naomi Baker and Tammy Young. Since you're a Baby Lock owner, become a member of society. The Elite Network for Sewing Excellence, developed especially for sewers who want the most current surging and sewing information available. With your membership comes a customized three-ring binder, quarterly newsletters, society extras, a membership card, a beautiful Cloisonne Society membership pin, as well as a dynamic 45-minute videotape. If you have any questions or comments about your baby lock, we're always happy to hear from you.